Dude, come on, check it out. You see this house? I got a freaking sick deal on this house. Doesn't look super nice, but check it out. I'm trying to decide today, do I want to flip it and make a, like a pile of money? Do I want to rent it and get that cash flow? Or do I want to do this thing called a lease option? I don't really know, but today we're going to find out. One, 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 one shot. Now the future for sure. Let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality. Yeah. It's one, all, one shot. Now the future for sure. Let's go. If you're not aware, of all the strategies in real estate, three of the most popular are flipping, rentals, and lease options. And you know what? I've been lit up with questions, people saying, Chris, which one of those should I focus on? And if we're going to have that conversation, we should at least start with, what are those three strategies? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I already wrote a book about this. I not just compared these three strategies, I compared the top 30 strategies. And guess what? There is one that is way more profitable than the rest, especially when you say, wow, which one takes the least time, the least effort, which one has the least risk? And on top of that, yes, makes the most money. And then I added two bonuses. What works in up and down markets? Dude, the prices in real estate right now are crazy. They're going up. They're not going to stay up there forever. How do I invest in real estate smart where I can win today, but I can win when the market crashes too? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the first strategy that I brought up, a flip. As you can see, it just fell over. Flipping refers to purchasing an asset with a short holding period with the intent of selling it for a quick profit rather than holding onto it for a long-term appreciation. In other words, most people usually buy a dump, like a fixer-upper, they put some money into it, they get it on the market, and their goal is to get in and out as fast as possible, and maybe it's a, oh yeah, I bought this house for $200,000, and then I sold it for $300,000, and I didn't make $100,000 of profit because I had to put like $30,000 into it, but maybe I made $70,000. Did that go too fast for you? Check it out. I buy this house right here for $200,000 under market because it's a trasher. And then I put $30,000 of repairs into this property. So now I'm into it a total of $230,000. Then let's just make it real simple and say that I sell this house for $300,000. And when I do that, I say, well, I'm 230 in, I sold it for 300, so after I subtract my 230,000, what am I left with? $70,000. And let's skip the realtor fees or some of the other expenses and let's just say that you actually made $70,000 on it. That's a flip. I bought it, I fixed it, I flipped it, and I made my money. There's always this fight between the flippers and the landlords. Landlords buy houses not to sell for a quick profit. They actually want to put a tenant in the house and they want to rent it and earn this thing called cash flow. Let me show you what it means. According to Investopedia, residential rental property refers to homes that are purchased by an investor and inhabited by tenants, meaning not them, they rent it to somebody else. It may include standalone single family dwellings to large multi-unit apartment buildings. And the reason why they do this is maybe they buy that house and they're just saying, I'm going to rent you out. And after I cover all my expenses, there's some leftover money. And if I do a number of those homes, I could have enough residual income to retire. Let me give you an example. I find this exact same house like I just showed you in that neighborhood right there. Let's say I can buy this house again for $200,000. And at the end of the day, I've got a mortgage. Let's say that my mortgage after down payment is $1,000 a month. That's all of my expenses. I've got to pay that every month to the bank, no matter what. But I put a family in this home and let's say that they're willing to pay $1,300 a month. They cover all of the utilities. So this is the rent that I'm collecting. Well, if I have 1300 coming in and if I have a thousand going out, there's some leftover money. There's $300 a month. What is that money? That money is called cash flow. That's what you get. It's a reward for being the investor. I get to hold onto the house. I get that money pretty much tax free because of the depreciation and the tax write off. And then guess what? Over time, the values might actually grow in that property. So someday when I sell it, shoot, that home is now worth. $300,000. I bought it for $200,000. What did I make? I made an extra $100,000 of profit while I made money renting it along the way. And then you have this thing called a lease option. And for me, that's kind of a hybrid between a flip and a rental. 
Sometimes people call a lease option a rent to own. Have you seen those signs in yards in front of houses? It's not the most popular program, but it sure is dang profitable. Here's what a lease option is. It's an agreement that gives a renter a choice to purchase the rented property during or at the end of the rental period. Like think about it like this way. I buy this house and I want to flip it. I hope it's off my plate in three months. Or it's a rental, I'm a landlord. I want to keep this home forever and make cash flow. But right in between, you might say, well, I want to make good money on this house, so I'm going to rent it, but maybe after three, four, or five years, I'm going to sell it to the tenant, and up front, they're going to give me a down payment. It's kind of like getting some cash up front like a flip, but it also means a higher cash flow along the way. I don't want to hold on to it forever. I want to control that asset. In five years, I'm going to dump it, and I'm going to make a pile of money then. First of all, it's really important to understand the difference between a rental and a rent to own. I've got them marked up here. I'm gonna cover some of that up. Let's say I've got a rental and I'm gonna compare it on this property to a lease option. I buy the house for $200,000. That doesn't change in either situation. Remember that other example? The expenses were 1,000 a month for my mortgage, my taxes, my insurance, and stuff like that. Well, there you go, it's $1,000, whether it's a lease option or rental. But then it starts getting different when we call it a deposit. You see, there's a deposit and there's a down payment. With a rental, you're getting a deposit. First and last month's rent, maybe a little security deposit if they screw the place up. You have to give that money back. That goes towards the rent. But the $5,000 that you see over here, this is a non-refundable down payment to have the option to buy this home. Next, we go to rent. Look at this comparison. On the, on the left side, I've got my rent at $1,300 a month. But on the right, my lease option is renting for $1,500 a month more. Why is that the case? Well, it's because a lease option is more valuable. You're providing more value. You're telling the tenant, I'm gonna help you buy this thing. They're willing to pay more for that. Then of course we have repairs. Well, shoot, if it's a rental, you're gonna have repairs. Let's call it 150 a month. But on the lease option, you don't have them. Why? Because this is someone that says, this is my house. I haven't technically bought it yet, but I have a contract to buy it. Of course it's my house, I'm gonna take care of it. Property management fee. If you don't wanna be the landlord, you're gonna pay some other company probably 10% of your gross profits to rent it out. By the way, 10% on 1,300 is $130. Repairs of $150 a month is 150 plus that 130. It almost wipes out your $300 a month positive cash flow. But on a lease option, you don't have property management because again, the person says, this is my home. This is my home. And finally, when you sell the house, you're gonna to have to pay 6% realtor fees uh, and that's going to take a huge chunk out of that sales price. With a lease option, I already found my tenant. I don't have to worry about that. Now, if you're saying, well, Chris, this is a lot of information, but what does this mean? Let me make it easy for you. Lease option compared to rental essentially produces two times the profit of a rental. So by the way, when I own a single family property, the only reason why I would ever do a rental is if the property was sentimental and I never wanted to sell it or get rid of it. If it's for business, if it's an investment, you better bet your bridges I'm gonna be doing a lease option. Okay, Chris, but listen, there's a lot of experts out there that have comments on you know, what's better. Is it literally owning rentals, like doors as they like to call it? Is it flipping properties? Is it lease option? Like, How can you really claim there's a best one? In a moment, I'm gonna show you what the industry thinks about all three of these, and at the end, I'm gonna show you what I think. Now, obviously, you can get my book for free in the link below where I'll actually show you the real math behind which one of these is the most profitable, but let's start with what the information provided out there really looks like. Which one of these is best? Well, let's do this. Let us take a look on the left side here of flipping, comparing to rentals, comparing to lease options, and across the top, we're just gonna look at four aspects. Which one of them takes the least time? Which one of them makes big profits? Which one of them is easy? And which one of them is low risk? Based on those four criteria, let me share with you in general what the industry tends to think. Let's start with the flip. What we see here is that, Chris, flipping does not take a lot of time, right? I'm gonna be in the deal today, and in two or three months, I should be out, and I'm gonna get a big chunk of money. Also, there's like the possibility of some really huge profit there. So yeah, lease time, make a ton of money. Is it easy? No, I wouldn't say that flipping is easy. I think that it's a skill that has to be acquired and you gotta find a team and find people that you can really trust. Um, and as far as being low risk, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're a newbie investor going out there and you don't really understand the game, I've met many a new investor that became a don't wanter because they got in the game, they thought they were doing the flip right and they didn't calculate the math correctly. 
they were thinking, Chris, I bought it for $200,000. I'll sell it for $300,000. Before you know it, their $30,000 of expenses turned into $60,000 of expenses. Then on top of that, they found out that there were other problems with the property. Like, I didn't know that I had to factor in my closing costs. 2%. What about the 6% realtor fees? That's another 8%. 8% on $300,000? That's like another 20 something thousand dollars. And by the time they get to the end of it and they sell the property, they're like, uh, I thought I was going to make 70 grand and like I lost $3,000. 3000 That's crazy. This happens to someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. Now, some of my first mentors said, Chris, become a landlord. It's not as sexy. You're not going to make as much money as flipping. But the longer you hold on to properties, the more they appreciate, there's tax benefits, and there's that cash flow that starts to stack up. So I said, great, let's take a look at rentals. And you know what I found? Yep, it doesn't take a lot of time once you get everything set up, especially if you have a property manager. There's big profits, like you can make some good money. If you get good at that game and you play it the right way, that cash flow month in and month out, it stacks up to something meaningful. Is it easy? Well, I got to buy the property. I'm going to give it to maybe a property manager. Maybe I'm good at playing landlord. Maybe I like to fix the plunger, whatever problem on the toilet. Uh, but then is it low risk? Well, there's some high risk with that because if you're not getting a big chunk of money up front, then you better hope you're doing everything right along the way. The longer you hold that property, if there's bump in the night when like a tenant screws up the property and requires you to write a $10,000 check after they literally like leave with smashing the windows in, you're definitely going to feel that it wasn't that much of a low risk experience. But you know what? After I bought my very first property, I had another mentor come into the picture and said, Chris, you should consider lease option. I'm like, what's that? They're like, it's this thing called rent to own. I'm like, what's that? Let me show you. Rent to own basically compares this way. Does it take little time? Yeah, it actually takes less time than a rental. Um, can it make huge money? I think it makes a lot of great money. Is it easy? Just like anything, once you learn how to do it, this is very duplicatable. And then finally, what's the risk like? Well, because it has this hybrid action of some upfront money and bigger cash flows along the way, what that does is it severely lowers the risk. Also bear in mind that you have tenants that are taking care of the property because they're saying, this house isn't technically mine. I have it under contract to buy it. And when I do, it will be mine. So they're thinking, I'm gonna take care of this home. Of all three of these strategies, this one checks all four boxes. But I wanna take a moment and share with you how I see the world quite different when it comes to lease options. You see, why I love lease options is different than most people. There's a service component that I really appreciate. I'm looking to put a family in the home and I wanna help that family buy that home. Why would I do that? Because when they actually buy it and I sell that home, I'm gonna get a chunk of money that I can use to buy twice as many homes. And I don't know about you, but every three, four, five years, I wanna double the size of my portfolio. It's like owning a herd of cows, sheep, or some animal and saying, I wanna multiply that herd. I want my houses to get together and make some babies. Lease option makes it really possible for me to keep upgrading my portfolio, getting great profits. But don't take my word for it. I reached out recently to uh, one of my students that I taught lease option to, he was a former landlord. He actually had some rentals and I helped convert it over to the notion of lease option and then he fell in love. His name's Brian. Check out what he has to say. Hey, good morning. Chris Crone World. Just wanted to pop in and give a quick review. Uh, my wife, Rachel, and I joined the lease option program about a year ago. Uh, we currently sit uh, at about 15, 16, I think, uh, lease option houses. Uh, man, it's been a game changer for us. Uh, you talk about just having a just just better tenants. Uh, you know, we, we a lot more success with rent being paid, paid on time. Uh, we don't get the late night phone calls. Uh, you know, really kind of diving into Chris's model just has really done a lot for us from a profitability standpoint, from a stress standpoint, and really kind of reinvigorated us from uh, just, just being a landlord. Uh, it just makes for a better experience because you've got a tenant now in place that has uh, skin in the game. They have something to lose. Uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a different scenario. Uh, quite frankly, we were pretty burned out uh, on being landlords, and, and this really has helped kind of turn that around for us but as far as the process and and utilizing chris's model uh game changer i i, I would strongly st strongly encourage any and everyone to take a really hard look at, at joining the 
this the lease option program and and immediately put in it uh you know putting that in into play good luck to all you guys and again chris thanks a lot man I agree with Brian, and I gotta tell you, I have some feelings that are quite a bit different than the rest of the industry. Let me share with you how I really see the grid. It looks more like this. You see, when I compare lease options to everything else, flipping, it takes way too much time. Like for many of these guys, it's actually real estate as a job. It's like, oh yeah, we were in that property for five weeks and I was there 60 hours a week and we were fixing up. I'm like, dude, that's not passive. Lease option is passive, that's not passive. Or you check out this idea that, yeah, there's big profits, but it's not easy, there's high risk. Check out rentals. Notice here that in my worldview, I can't find a single merit of doing a rental compared to a lease option because even a little bit of time is a job. And I'm not here to do real estate as a job. I'm here for my money to work for me. Listen, never get caught up on the strategy. You gotta get caught up on the ROI of the money and the ROI of time. And so when I show you all green across the board, that's because my financial ROI is higher than these other options, but more importantly, my time ROI is what is scoring bigger than anything else. In today's video, I covered just a smidge of what's in this book. And the reason why it's yours for free is because I want you to be financially empowered. You could literally read and extract the knowledge in this book and in four and a half years make $1.6 million the way I did, literally with like $3,000 out of pocket. It's wild and crazy. I know, that's crazy. I have students today that are doing lease option that are acquiring homes with no money and with no credit. And I love sharing that knowledge with the world. In fact, because of financially where I come from, from my childhood, I'm completely passionate about helping other people find better and smarter ways. If today's video resonated with you, click the link below and let me share with you how cool this stuff really is. You know, sometimes people look at my videos and they're like, oh, Chris, why, when are you gonna go into the real juicy nitty gritty details of like how this all works? And I'm like, oh, I know, 10, 12 minutes. At the end of the day, it's just not a lot of time. But you know what, not too long ago, I actually created a four little part mini series, literally walking through step by step how lease options are twice as profitable as rentals or flips. And if you wanna understand the nitty gritty details of how that actually works, check out the short series. Yes, these are my money socks. They give me eagle powers. And when I wear them, I tend to do three times as many real estate deals. I'm not superstitious. I'm not, no, 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 not me. <laughs>